Welcome back, my beautiful people, to another episode of Talk It Up with Tierra Monique. I am your girl, Tierra Monique, and it is time to talk it up. Well, hello, hello, hello. I hope everyone is having a great day. Um, if you're not, I hope it gets better for you. Um, uh, today's been a good day for me. Well, the, the later half of the day, I woke up kind of dizzy, but thank God I feel better now. Um, and I wanted to go ahead and hop on and record this so that we can learn something together <laughs> i'm learning this i've been learning this so many so many times but um yes let's talk about give it some time okay so we're trusting the process of god and that is what today's podcast is all about um i have a couple of points that i want to go ahead and point out to you but first I want to pray. So God, we thank you for this podcast. We thank you for the people who are listening and we ask you, God, that you will bless them and meet their needs and whatever they need uh, will come to them. And in Jesus name, amen. All right. So let's go ahead and get into this. So first let's do story time. I haven't done story time in a very long time. So story time. So story time is my son, my youngest son, um, he was, um, He's always hungry, of course. Children are always hungry. And um, he said to me, you know, mommy, I'm hungry. I want to eat. Can you give me some pizza? I'm like, sure. But he was so hungry that he's like, mom, can you put the pizza in the microwave? <laughs> like, I can't put the pizza in the microwave. You know, it has to go into the oven or the convection oven. And he's like, please, can you please put it in the microwave? I was like, no, it's going to have to go into the oven. So, um, I put the pizza into the convection oven and I said, look, it's going to have to go on for at least 16 to 17 minutes. So put a timer on and when it goes off, then it's going to be time to take the pizza out. So he's like, well, I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. Right. And then when I was not paying attention, he went into the kitchen and he turned <laughs> the convection oven off so that the ding would go off. And it was like, ding. And I was like, wait a minute, I just sat down. I know it's not done already. So I get up and I go and I see him in the kitchen. I go, did you turn off the convection oven? Did you turn it off? He was like, I don't know. So I walk over into the kitchen and lo and behold, it was off because he had turned it off. And the pizza was still, of course, not done. So I had to tell him, <laughs> um, you can't make the pizza cook faster than what you want it because you're hungry you're gonna have to wait um if you eat it now it's not gonna be digestible it's not gonna be good and you're gonna get sick because it's still doughy it has to cook all the way so i turned it back on and i said when it really goes off the next time then it's gonna be ready and of course 16 minutes went past and it went off and it was ready so i say all that to say this just like children we as adults sometimes want to rush the process of God when it comes to things that we really want, the things that we are really hungry for. And um, we want to rush the process. We want to rush things and we want to make God become a genie in a bottle and make things happen like a magician. And that's not how it works. And so um, the story of the Bible, there's so many times in the Bible they talk about waiting, but there's a story in the Bible about um Lazarus, where um, Mary and Martha had sent a letter to Jesus to tell him that, you know, Lazarus was sick and that, um, you know, come and they needed him to come and, and, you know, do what he does. And so uh, he told them, um, okay, I'll be there in two days. So he already knew what he needed to do. He already knew what was going to happen. He already knew that Lazarus was already dead, even though they didn't say that he was dead, but he knew. He knew that even though by the time he got there, he was going to be dead and that when he got there, he was going to do what he knows to do best, and that's just be Jesus and be the the um, the son of God and the Messiah and to heal Lazarus and bring him back to dead. So he already knew his assignment. He already knew what he was going to do. And he already knew. Hold on. All right, I'm back. <laughs> See, there's my son again. He's 
He couldn't wait. He got, he couldn't wait. Um, but God already had an assignment. He already knew what his assignment was. And he already knew what the um, the result was going to be and what the end was going to be. And so um, he didn't need to hurry up. He said, give me two days. He, it didn't say what he was doing in those two days. It didn't say what he had to cl uh, clear up or what he was doing. But he said, okay, I'll be there in two days. Because he knew that Lazarus was already dead. And it wasn't going to make him be less dead um, by him hurrying up. And I wrote down here, just like Jesus had Mary and Martha wait, um, it's the same way that God allows us to wait, or he tells us that we have to wait. And um, just because God loves you, because, you know, Jesus loved um, Mary and Martha. He, lo he loved them dearly. But just because Jesus loves us, it's not mean that he's going to make things happen as soon as you say it. He's going to make you wait. Um, your, his love for you is not different than his love for anybody else. So just like other people have to wait, you're going to have to wait. And so, um, he's not going to act on your command. So just remember that, you know, you're going to have to wait. So what are the things are we, that we are waiting on? Okay. There's many things that we're all waiting on. Um, we're waiting on healing, you know, we're waiting on a promotion, we're waiting on um, to be engaged or in a committed relationship, to be to get married. Um, we're waiting for um, uh, to be to break addictions, whether it's addiction of drugs or sex or shopping or gossiping, um, any kind of addiction. Um, we're waiting on a new job opportunity or a new school opportunity to get into school. We may be waiting on to get pregnant. You may be a couple who who it, who has been praying very long time to get pregnant, and um, you may be waiting on a new car. You need a new car. You need a new home. You may be waiting for God to give you um, new direction on what to do in this time of your life, and you also may be waiting for God to give you the go ahead to go because you've been waiting for God to to give you that okay you can go now you can go ahead and do this or you can go ahead and 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 proceed with what I what what with what <laughs> excuse me with what I have already put in you and what I what I have already told you to do because a lot of times God will put something in you today but he'll say okay this is what I want you to do but not yet and he will tell you okay just just wait a little bit trust the process I got this all under control but just wait so those are the things that we are waiting for oh increase in pay I think I said I don't know if I said that or if you're a podcaster or you're into radio, whatever you're waiting, you're waiting for um, that to be monetized <laughs> or sponsorships. You're waiting for that book to be published. You're waiting for the idea to come to pass. There are a lot of things that we are waiting on. But if you know, like I know, and if you don't know, I'm going to tell you, time is essential for all good things to result in good things. <laughs> None of that may not make sense, but hear me out. So time is essential for the process to create a quality product. If you do, if you want something of quality, if you want um, real healing and not fake healing, if you want um, the promotion that's going to continue to keep you at home with your family or, or not stress you out or not have you losing sleep, you know, if you want the right relationship of good quality, just not anybody, if you um, you want the right marriage, if you want to know the process of how to, you know, break free of those addictions, if you, you know, the want the right, the right job opportunity, the right school um, opportunity, if you want the, the necessary tools and um, knowledge of the right way to, um, to conceive a child, um, or maybe you may have to do it through adoption. Um, the right car, the right home, you know, everything that is offered to you may not be from God. So you want to make sure you are choosing God quality products, <laughs> if you will. You want it to be, you want the product, the process, you want to go through the process to, so that the process will then, will then yield a result of God quality, a God quality results. That is what you want to focus on. I want God quality results. I want whatever I'm waiting on not to be something that I'm making happen, 
but I am really trusting God that he is going to make it happen for me and he's going to make it happen in a way that it's going to benefit me and give him the glory at the same time. Because sometimes blessings happen and those are blessings that we have made happen for ourselves because we've been impatient on waiting. So um, this scripture, um, Isaiah 43, 18, it says, I am doing something brand new, something unheard of, unheard of. Even now it sprouts and grows and matures. Don't you perceive it or don't you see it? That's Isaiah 43, 18. So God is doing something new. He's going to do something new in your life right now, but you have to trust the process, okay? So you have to give it some time. Just like God had a miracle of you being born. It took some time. You were not born in a day. You may have been conceived in a moment. <laughs> you may have been conceived in five minutes. <laughs> but it then took nine and a half to 10 months for most of us to be born. We had to go through a process. Our bodies had to go through a process. Um, if you are a woman and you were, and you were pregnant, your body had to had to change. It had to um, grow. You had to gain weight because by gaining weight, the baby gains weight. Um, you had to go through the process of going to the doctor, getting checked out, um, having your, your monthly checkups, um, going through the process of no knowing what's the right things to eat, what not to eat that can harm the baby. So just like it's going to take a baby nine months to 10 months to get here, it's going to take time for what you're praying for to get here but you have to give it some time see god's time is not our time see a day to us 24 hours is not a day to god it can things can happen suddenly or they can happen in god's timing and one thing i know for sure is that god is seeing what are you going to do while you're waiting are you going to be impatient are you going to complain are you going to be impulsive what are you going to do so I know you're saying Tierra, so how do I wait? How do I give it some time? How do I trust the process of God and let God do something that I have never seen before? How do I not focus on what I'm waiting on? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so how do I wait on God? All right, one, on purpose, seek God for direction, okay, in all things. Seek God first in all things, Matthew 6, 33. Um, seek God in all things, you know, ask him for direction. God, what should I do now after I've prayed? Um, after I have um, let you know what I need and what I would like to do. And after you have given me peace about my desires of whatever it is, going back to school or getting a new job or buying a new house or, you know, choosing a spouse, you know, what, what do I do now? Ask God for direction. You know, it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything and in every situation by prayer and petition, you know, with Thanksgiving, make your request known to God. So after you've done that, then you ask God for direction. Okay. All right. So also recognize that time is needed to build the blessing okay and i went over that a little bit before time is needed to build the blessing just like time is needed for you to bake the cake time is needed to have the baby time is needed to make the pizza <laughs> time is needed to build the blessing once you make your request known to god god said okay i got it right there he's already got it okay all right i got your house right there I got the car right there. I got the job right there. I have your healing right now, but I need something from you. So it's not like God is trying to, you know, play with you and he's holding like this. He's like a, a fisherman holding a bait, you know, for you to grab onto it. Or he's like, um, or you're some kind of a uh, cat and he's playing cat and mouse with you or um, swinging something over your face saying, oh, look, look, here it is. Here it is. Are you going to grab it? Are you going to grab it? He's not saying that. He's saying, okay, do you trust me that even though you may want it right now, you're not ready for it. Let me show you 
what else I need you to do before you get what you want. Let me show you what I need you to do before you get an increase in pay. Because you're not being a great steward over the money that you have right now coming in. What are you going to do with the money that I bless you with in the next coming months? Um, or in the next week or tomorrow? Are you going to be good at taking care of that money? Are you going to be good at not blowing it, blowing it on everything and anything that you think that you can afford? Are you going to do your due diligence and um, be financially stable and, and, and mature and do what I need you to do with the money so that you can continue to to increase your wealth and, and increase your legacy and your family and your children. Because what we do as parents, our children see it. So we have to pass down good habits to our children and to the people around us. Um, everybody was is not financial literate. So maybe God is trying to say, okay, I need you to, you know, research this and watch this YouTube or, you know, um, buy this book and I need you to do your due diligence and get the information on how and what you can do to um, increase your portfolio or to become um, better with having a budget. So God wants you to prepare. He wants you to prepare. And he, he may be trying to give you um, the necessary tools and the wisdom that you need to be ready for it. Okay. All right. So recognize that time is important time is important and the time that you're on um, that you're not utilizing and not maximizing it's also important so if you're going to waste your time just waiting on god oh girl i'm just waiting on lord i'm just waiting on god to be my man i'm just waiting on god for this house i'm just waiting on well what are you doing again preparation preparation can is is the cousin <laughs> It's the to to waiting. You know, it's necessary. You can't just sit and wait. You know, faith without works is dead. What are you doing? You may be believing for this. You haven't seen it yet, but you see it in your head. You see it in your vision. You can see it. You can see that. Um, you can see the healing. You can see your deliverance from um drugs and alcohol. You can see your deliverance from um from you know overeating or overspending or gossiping or um you know being easily angered and easily offended you can see it you can see it but what are you doing to take the next step so that you can get there okay number three um focus on now i just look, i went right into that preparation get ready for the next level so i've been talking about that the whole time about preparing 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 um, it is very important to prepare. If you want to be a wife, if you want to be a husband, are you going to those dating seminars or are you watching the YouTube videos about dating and how to be a great wife and how to be a great mother? Or are you sitting around and all you're watching is Ready to Love? <laughs> Which is nothing wrong with watching Ready to Love. I watch that show too and you can learn a lot from it. But what else are you watching? What else are you feeding into your into your spirit, into your soul, that's going to help you when um, your husband or your wife shows up. What are you doing? You want a house, okay? Are you looking for it? What are you doing to pay down your debt? Are you seeking out financial um, counseling from someone who can give you the steps, the tools that you need to get ready to buy the house? Because you can't just say, okay, I want to buy a house. No. Um, depending on your credit, if you're going that route, or if you don't, if you don't need credit and you have the money, okay. So what else do you need to do? You need that. Those are the things that you have to think about, because once God gives it to you, then now is your responsibility to show Him that you were ready, you were truly ready, that you are worthy to have that blessing that He gave to you. Um, the next thing is that. Um, don't be anxious. Don't be so anxious. You know, when you, you know, focus on trying to be patient, being patient, being patient with yourself, being patient with God, because again, you may want it. You've been probably waiting for a long time and God is like, okay, ah, I want to give it to you. I love you so much. I know how much you want this. I know how much you may need this, but 
oh, I just I just need you to be a little bit more patient. I need you to not only be patient with with me, but be patient with yourself. Be patient with the people around you. How are you treating those people around you while you're waiting? Are you being snippy and snappy and you know your face is all wound up? And like, girl, what's wrong? She's like, oh, I just can't wait to get off this job. And no, you need to be patient and be in a in a mindset of praise and worship to God. God, I know this is not where I want to be, but I'm here for a reason. So whatever, whatever reason that I'm here at this job, show me because I know that better is coming. But until I get to the better, what? let me see what I can do right now where I am. You know, it, it, that's what it's all about. It's all about praising God in the middle of what you're going through or what you're when, or in the middle of waiting so that God knows you're not just going to be praising him and thanking him for the blessing, but you're praising him and thanking him for what you already have right now. Even if you are married and you're waiting on that spouse to um, get their self together, maybe they um, they had an affair or and they just still haven't come around. Maybe they left and you're still holding out for them to come back to you. Um, praise God and thank God for for what you're learning about yourself at this moment. Um, and let God work on your own faith and work on your own relationship with him so that you can be a great example for your spouse, um, for him to come back and for God to continue to give you direction on what can happen because God is a God of the impossible. Unless this person is mentally abusing you, physically abusing you, um, or taking um, advantage of you um, in any kind of way that um, is harmful to you, if that's not happening, then let God be God in your relationship. Let God be God in your marriage so that he can turn it all around for you. Okay, okay. All right, so I said, do not be anxious. So because when you become impatient, impatience yields anxious. I'm sorry. <laughs> impatience yields anxiety or impatience yields anxious um, and impulsive decisions. How about that? So if you're anxious about something, like, oh my gosh, I'm so anxious. Oh, I can't wait for this to happen. And, oh, and then it's not happening. You're still waiting. You're still waiting. And then you may uh, make an impulse decision and try to make something happen that God didn't approve to happen. And that's when I said that it can be a, a man-made blessing. You know how there's man-made lakes and or man-made ponds and man-made communities and we sometimes have man-made blessings well where we will create a blessing because we're tired of waiting we get tired of waiting we get fed up with waiting so we'll create a blessing and it looks so pretty and it's like oh everybody's like oh my gosh i can't oh that's so you look so blah 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 and you know you're getting all this but guys like i didn't even co-sign that i didn't co-sign that guy for you. I didn't co-sign that woman for you. I didn't co-sign that house for you. I didn't co-sign that car for you. I didn't co-sign that job for you. Okay. I didn't co-sign that travel. You know, went and took out credit cards so that you could go and on a all expense paid exclusive um, trip because you're seeing everybody else going on trips and you don't even know how they're paying for their trip, but you're like, I'm going to go ahead and take out this credit card and pay for this trip. And now you're in further debt because you want to go on a trip that you're not financially ready to go on a trip for. And you don't know what God could have did to get you on that trip. He could have had it so that somebody else paid for your trip. He could have had it so that you got a free trip. You just don't know. He could have had it where you got a huge discount on the trip. Or you could have got better um, a hotel. or um, You just don't know. But because but when we jump out in front of God, we we basically cancel out all of the extra benefits that would have came would have come with the blessing. But when we try to make our own blessings, that we don't even get the extra added benefits that God had already um, put into the blessing that we're waiting on. So it's like, don't be so anxious and so impatient that you make impulsive decisions that would then you're going to have to um, suffer the consequences and start all over again with the waiting. I don't know if you ever <laughs> I remember growing up, you're like, don't cut the line, don't cut the line when you were in school. And the teacher's like, don't, don't jump the line. And as soon as you try to jump the line and somebody, and then the teacher finds out, what does she do? She had to go all the way back to the back of the line. So now you have to wait longer because you were being impatient 
because by trying to jump the line. And he's like, wait a minute, this is not where you're supposed to be. You're in the place that you're supposed to be in. And when it's time for you to be up at the front of the line, you're going to be up the front of the line. But if you try to skip steps and skip the process and not go along with the process, then what's going to happen? Then you're going to have to go all the way back, <laughs> all the way to the back of the line and start all over again with the process. Okay, there's a great book out by George L. Davis called Passing the Test of Life. And it is really good. And I have to keep reading that book over and over again because there is a time test that we all have to pass. And if we can't take the time, <laughs> pun intended, if we can't take the time to recognize that God's timing is better than our timing, then we're going to keep having to take that same test over and over again. And then, and then you're just wasting your life. You're wasting the time that you have on this earth that could be going towards something else that God has for you. But instead, when you try to make it about you and try to push past God, then you're wasting time and then you have to start all over again. Okay, okay. All right. So what did I say? Um, so God says, do not worry about um, tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has its own troubles. And that's Matthew 6, 34. So don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. Worry about now. I'm sorry. Take that back. Don't worry at all. <laughs> don't worry about tomorrow, but focus on now. Focus on today. Don't think, sit around thinking, oh, you know, about tomorrow. And, I, and when I say that, and when the Bible states that, they're not saying that don't have a plan. Of course, have a plan. You know, Habakkuk tells us, you know, write the vision and make it plain. So, yes, you want to have a plan, but you don't want to worry about the plan. How about that? You don't, okay, I wrote the plan down. Here it is. Here it is, God. Boom. Here's my vision for my life. God, if it lines up with what you have for me, if it's pleasing to you, boom, here it is. And then you let it go. And then every day, you go to God, oh God, I thank you for this. I thank you that it's on the way. I know it's coming and I'm waiting patient on you, God, and help me to wait patient on you. And you know, every day you have to commit to being patient and trusting God in the process and giving it some time, giving things time, give the people in your life time. Um, I don't know where this just came from, but give people, and this is God probably, mostly, not probably, it is. <laughs> thank you, God. Give people time to forgive you. Just because you ask them for forgiveness and you apologize to them does not mean they have to automatically forgive you right now. Now, if they do automatically forgive you, give them time to trust you again because trust is not a given, it is earned. You don't get trust right away. So if you did something to offend someone, and you ask them for forgiveness, give them time. Give them time to um, to see if you are trustworthy enough to become close with them again. Also, give your children time to be children. Give your children time to decide what they want to do in life and where they want to be and what they want to do in school. And um, don't try to put on what you didn't do and what you didn't accomplish while you were growing up on your children. Prime example, my son, he, at first he said he didn't want to go to the prom. I wanted him to go to prom. I'm like, oh, go to prom. It's so great. Go to prom. Because I didn't have a prom date. I mean, I went to prom, but I didn't have a guy to prom date. I went with a good friend and we went to prom just, just as friends. And, but I wanted to have a guy guy date but I didn't um and so I was like oh you know you can have a you can go to prom you can have a prom date and he was like he didn't want to go so at first I was like I was going to try to try to you know sell him basically on going to prom but God said wait a minute this is his senior year if he doesn't want to go to prom he doesn't have to go to prom it's not going to stop him from graduating, which is the <laughs> which is the main focus is him getting his education, graduating from high school and going on to the next level. And so I had to fall back. I had to give him some time to decide if this is what if this if prom was going to be a part of his senior his senior year or his senior experience. And sure enough, maybe a couple of weeks later, he said, hey, mom, I decided I want to go to prom. 
And I know it was because I didn't push him. I didn't, I wasn't on his neck about it. I wasn't trying to make him do something that I wanted him to do. It wasn't going to hurt him not to go to prom. That was his decision. So you have to give your children time. You have to give relationships time. Don't try to jump into marriage and you just met him two weeks ago. Let me tell you something. I'm, <laughs> I've done that before um, where you, you meet someone and you're so involved with them and you're so infatuated with them. And as soon as they talk about rings and getting married, you're like, oh my gosh, and you're starting trying to plan things and you're calling around and trying to get dates and seeing how much this venue costs and how much this is going to cost and how much the dress is going to cost and how much the ring is going to cost and the food and all this stuff. And it's like, wait a minute, this man may not be the person for you, but you're so tunnel vision on that, on that wedding or being a wife that you forgot, wait a minute, this needs some time. I need to see this person in all seasons of their life. I need to see when they're angry, when they're happy, how they treat their family, how they treat other people around them. I need to see how they're going to um, react to when I'm going through something, God forbid. But if I do, um, you know, how they, are they going to support me? Are they going to motivate me? Um, are they going to pray with me? Uh, will they talk about God with me? Are they going to worship with me? you got to see people in all seasons of life. Not just the first two weeks or the first month or the first two months of how it's going to go. You have to give people time. You need to give yourself time. You need to give the relationship time to flourish and to see if it's going to be good or if it's not going to be good. Um, and to see what God's going to show you to that person. So, yes, give it some time. Everything, Anything worth having is worth waiting for. Anything worth having is worth waiting for. And my quote, because I got a quote this time. <laughs> <laughs> my quote is the most powerful thing you can do today right now is to be patient with yourself and others while you are waiting for things to unfold just be patient be patient be patient be patient be patient again if you want something of good quality of something good god quality because god quality is different than our quality god makes it the best, the best, the best. He will blow your mind with the blessings that he can give you better than you can blow your own mind <laughs> with the blessings that you give yourself. So if you want something that's of good God quality, then you want to trust the process and give it some time. Okay? Okay. Well, thank you again for joining me for another episode of Talk It Out with Tierra Monique. Again, you can reach me at talkitoutwithtiaramonique at gmail.com. You can go to the YouTube channel, Talk It Out with Tierra Monique. I am on Instagram at Talk It Out with Tierra Monique. And I have a website called EverythingTierraMonique.com where you can access um, the books that I've been reading. And also, um, you can access the podcast um, directly from the website. So, yes. So, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. Um, again, don't forget to love God, love yourself, love people. Seek God first in all you do. And until next time, God bless. It's me, just Bye.